Howdy, my name is Bernardo, and today I'm going to talk to you about one of my favorite lenses that I own. It's a $50 lens I found on eBay. It's an 80mm 1.7 manual lens, and it's fixed at 1.7. So the crazy thing is, when I first got the lens, the seller wasn't very clear. It mentioned full frame, it mentioned APS-C, it mentioned pretty much all the Sony modern cameras. So I'm like, okay, cool, this is going to be another one of those full frame pieces of glass that I get. I end up getting it and it's an APS-C lens. It's, it's hard lens to use, but it's also a very rewarding lens to use. Uh, what I mean is you cannot shoot far away, you cannot shoot too close to yourself, you need to find that sweet spot when you can shoot with people. So this is going to be a lens that's going to make you move. And it's going to be a lens that makes you really think about your shot when you're composing it. And it has a lot of drawbacks. It has a lot of flare. It's, it's not sharp on APS-C. It's a little bit blurry. I mean, I was able to get some good shots, actually some pretty great shots with it. But I discovered to really, really get the best out of this lens, I had to put it on my a7 III. Once I put it on my a7 III, it became much sharper and the quality of the images that were just really, really, really great. But it's, you know, suffered from the vignetting. But it depends how you feel about that because if you're a person who just wants edge to edge sharpness, crop. Or if you're a person who just wants, you know, a lens you don't have to overthink, point and shoot click, you're done. You know, this is obviously not it. Manual lenses aren't for you. But if you want something that you can really work with and enjoy and that makes you think a lot this is the lens for you so you think okay i lined up my shot it's great i got it i'm happy with it in camera when you take it home you're gonna have to dehaze it a lot of the time it's because for some reason it's, it's just a hazy piece of glass but once you do you get some great images i'm going to mention the final downside about this lens it's a screw top you want to take that lid off? Oh, you found the shot, you found the shot, great, great, great. And you finally were able to do it. But a lot of the time I find myself missing the shot I wanted to get because I'm screwing and unscrewing to do this thing. But once you do, you get this big, beautiful piece of glass made out of metal, feels like a tank, you can beat a mugger to death with this thing and you know, your lens will still be fine. It's just an all around fun thing to have in my kit. Now, when I first got it, I used it for flower photography a lot. And then I tried doing portraits with it, but that's one of my APS-C, and I found it was a challenge. But, again, when I got the shot, they were beautiful. Absolutely beautiful shots. And once I brought it to my full frame camera, wow, I absolutely love using it. It's just, um, it's, it, it gives me a look that I've never seen on something else. And I don't even bother cropping the vignetting because I think it adds to the photo. In fact, I actually really like to just play up the classic look it, 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 it has. So maybe I'll just make it a little more yellow. Maybe sometimes just play up the, the tones a bit, make them a bit warmer. Make them seem a little more retro. And with that, I've been having a field day. Now, the one thing that I tried for a long time to do with this lens and failed was street photography. And it was one of those things where I had to put in more effort. And I have to say, it's well worth it because the shots you get are awesome. Again, it's like they have that vintage look. They have that really interesting look. And then when I tried doing street photography and with people, it's harder I mean, street photography on people is hard anyway. But when you get the shot, and then when you get some, you know, really nice people who, like, you know, want to pose for you, you're going to really, really be happy with what you get. A no-name, amazing piece of glass for 50 bucks that I'd happily buy over and over again. In fact, I actually bought a second lens just in case something happened to this baby. 
you know, heaven forbid, I have a backup. And it's something that I honestly treasure. If I go someplace, I take it with me to now pretty much every place I go. So I have the chance to pull this out. And then the best part is it's weird, challenging, and fun to try to get like cityscapes with this thing or like some really cool architecture. Most of the time it doesn't work, but it's a hoot. It's something different. And if I want to nail the shot, I have my Rockin' on 35. I have my Sony 85. I have my Rockin' on 24. I have the glass for it, but sometimes you don't want the easy shot. Sometimes you just want to enjoy it. And this is where this lens really, really shines. The process, the process is just, just fun. And then it doesn't end when you're, you're done shooting, when you come home and I have to edit. I spend so much more time on these photos trying to get it just right. And again, it's, it, it's like even more rewarding when I feel like I finally do. So I really hope you go out and get this piece of glass, you find something similar, and I hope you, you know, like what you see. Have a great day. If you like our content, like, subscribe, and if you really like our content, support our Patreon. Have a great day.